Welcome to the Model Rail Replacement Podcast, helping you get to your onward journey. A friendly service that helps you get from A to B, or probably nowhere at all. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Model Rail Replacement Podcast. This is, I think, episode is it episode six off the top of my head. I, I'm, we've done so many now, I can't keep count. Yeah, um, I mean, we've we've got so many episodes under our belt. We're we're basically royalty. So I am James, and that voice you heard there was Sam. Hello, Sam. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm I'm not too bad. Um, I've been battling through the night shifts this week, but uh, you know the, the fatigue is catching up a little bit with me, as it always does. But otherwise, I'm well. Last week, I got my brand new bridge from Bunter's Yard. Bunter's Yard has scratch built a bridge for me for this particular scenic section. Now, it's 90 centimetres long, and he's done an absolutely fantastic job on it. Now, over the last week or so, um, I've basically been rushing to assemble it put it together and get it put on the layout so i can start building all the scenics around it and as of today i have dropper wires or feeder wires added to the track so i can now run trains across the six foot board as i so wish um and it looks beautiful i'm really really happy with it so i'm very positive because of i've effectively started more sections of my new layout as i said that sounds very cool i have seen photos of the bridge and um i mean codes to bunter's yard that bridge looks fantastic um and then obviously with your painting and weathering skills it looks superb now so i can't wait to see the scenery around it uh, i know you're dreading the amount of resin required <laughs> the water <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of resin, and I've a little a little insight into the the upcoming of this episode. We do talk about resin a little bit, and I'm genuinely scared thanks to the conversation that we have later on in the yeah, episode. Yeah, I think we we've, we've, uh, we we put the put the put the wheelies up you so to say. <laughs> cool. Um, you yeah, didn't, you didn't um, actually say what you've been up to, which is obviously I know you. Said I know, I know. I was, I was about to move on to the next bit. I was like, yeah, no, you don't care really about me. It's... <laughs> <laughs> quick get in there before he unfriends you yeah me um i've also been uh progressing with the layout this week and um if you people as i said i've done a food yard part two video only people watch that they'll know that i've sort of decided to take a break from finishing the food yard completely just because i'm having a few issues with point motors and i don't want to be disheartened and lose interest by trying to solve that issue so i'm gonna come back to that later and i've moved on to the more fun part of the scenic boards um so i'm currently what were just flat top boards originally installed i'm now taking the tops off uh, adding a few more bits of extra wood and the ground is raising up in the air um so i'm gonna have open top base boards and the um deck for the east coast mainline section is currently being installed so uh, that's, that's my, my thing yes yeah, very exciting it's sort of it's uh, but it has that temptation to rush it now because it's all it's almost there to run a train around the room um so i've sort of got to be patient with it because uh, I've, I've done this before <laughs> i've sort of rushed it and the woodwork hasn't been great and then you go get your running trouble where your curves are too sharp and stuff like that and it just sort of again you get disheartened and disinterested because it all went wrong so i'm taking my time and hopefully um I'm sort of aiming for the end of end of May to have a couple of trains running around, um, but we'll see on that one. But I, yeah, here's here's a real key question for you: What's the first train you're going to run around it when it's finished? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question because um, I've got those Cavalax fifty sixes. Um, I don't know if you heard about them, but people like them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they sound like they're good models. I haven't ran mine, <laughs> so I have been waiting to to run them round because I think they look fantastic. But also, I suspect by the time i have the loops down my um quite large order of class 66s may arrive from a curious scale as well so then it's uh, a real real tough choice um i don't know i'm gonna have to think about that one i'm not i'm not sure to make the maiden voyage i'm just looking at my do you know what i might i might do my network southeast class 101 with sound nice because i love that model um it's uh is that the backman one yes yes it it was the one it was the one that they did with sound and passengers fitted at a time when pricing was reasonable because it still has the price on the side of it i think i paid two 
Yeah, £269, and that was before they gave me the 15% discount. So yeah, that's what I've been up to this week. Shall we move on to the news? Yes, let's let's talk let's talk about the biggest news before we start that. Recently, it's been pointed out to Sam that the current logo that we use resembles um a gentleman's area and what may come from it. <laughs> if you if you drop a tin of paint. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had to admit to Sam that I was already fully aware of what it looked like when I made it. It's just the app I was using is absolute crud. And I tried to revert the colours and it crashed on me and it was like half past midnight. And I went, no, that'll do. No one will know. <laughs> but unfortunately, someone someone had spotted it. Um, <laughs> so with that in mind, uh, HR called me in again. Uh, I had to explain myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was tasked with the with the job of uh, correcting my mistake. And we have a new logo. From now on, you should see our brand new logo. Uh, t- t- uh, t- it took me a little while to try and think of something. And after a bit of hard thinking, I thought, well, well what do me and Sam like? Um, and regular listeners will know that we're quite fond of Network Southeast. Um, so our logo is very much inspired from the old Network Southeast livery with a, just a little tad of orange added to the end. Um, so, yeah, we have a new logo. You'll be seeing it hopefully out on the social media uh, and we'll sort of launch it today. Once somebody told me about the old logo, I couldn't unsee it. And before I had this sort of I knew exactly what it was. It was mine and James's logos fused together. Really clever idea. But then as soon as somebody said it, who knows nothing about railways, they instantly went, that's a and then unfortunately I couldn't unsee it. James has done a fantastic job uh, with the new logo. I think it looks really nice. We've gone completely off model railways here. We're going to talk about marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is obviously very important to model railways, as as we have received this week quite a few marketing emails, James. So with that segue, what's on the news? Well, so news-wise, yeah, there's not, not been anything massive this month, I'd say, uh, but there's been a few little tidbits come through. Uh, Rapido have announced that they are going to do a new fish van. Uh, there are going to be 16 versions of this van. Um, and I think it was quite quite prominent at the time. I think it sort of was used as a fish van and eventually ended up on the newspaper trains and stuff like that. Um, looks very cool. I, I quite like the look of it. I think it's really my era, but maybe it could go my preserve line. That would be quite interesting to see uh, coming from Rapido. These vans uh, are completely opposite. They look like they're going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, as it Rapido... Um, I always like their work. They always put so much effort into the detail and everything they do. So I think these are going to look um, great when they come out. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing them. Um, but we're not biased here. We do like to talk about the other manufacturers. We don't just uh, favour one over the other. We like to be impartial. So <laughs> uh, other manufacturer-wise, Backman have announced that their summer announcements will be coming out on the 1st of May. Other news, uh, Rails have revealed decorated samples of the Class 88. They are doing in conjunction, I believe, with Daypole. Uh, and this is the Locomotive 88010, which is Aurora, in the refrigerated rail livery, which is like a sort of ice blue with some white sort of ice frosting on one end. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm very... I wasn't going to get an 88, but I'm quite a big fan of the 68s. Um, but seeing that, I was like, oh, I'm, quite, I'm very, very, very tempted to get that one. It just looks so good. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm quite excited about seeing that one. Continuing the day pole theme, um, their class 121 bubble car is due soon. This looks very good as well. This is the um, O-gauge one, isn't it? It is. It's the O-gauge one. Um, mm. They look great. I mean, I love bubble cars. They look really good. Uh, and again, uh, we'll continue with the O-gauge temptation theme that uh, <laughs> seems to be uh, the main story arc between uh, through our podcasts. Uh, they've got uh, quite a few liveries on the looks of things. So BR Green, there's Network Southeast and the Revised, um, BR Green with Speed Whiskers, there's uh, Blue and Grey, and the Blue one as well, uh, Network Southeast Root Learner. So there's a few coming out. Uh, I tell a lie, some of those liveries are for the class 122. So they're actually doing both, doing the 121 and the 122. Um, but yeah, they look really, really nice, very tempting. And to go along with that, the, they've also announced that they are going to do a kitmaster range of O gauge buildings, generally based around the London southwestern sort of area. And they've got like a station building, a signal box, good shed, um, and a few other little line side structures. 
And they look quite nice as well. Um, yeah, they do. Anyway, that is this week's news. Uh, we do appreciate that we are out on the Monday of the, and I'm trying to do the date off the top of my head, that would be the 29th. So this is uh, after the Key Model World uh, exhibition. I'm certain that when you're listening to this, there'll be some announcements that were made over the weekend, and we should talk about them next week in next week's news. Uh, unless no one announced anything, and then we'll just make something up. We are going to go on to our main segment. So this week, we had the privilege of talking with Sanford East owners, Rich and Ollie. And we got to find out a little bit about their modelling lives, histories, interests, and all things model railway related. So with that, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Look at that! You see that there? The super shiny diesel loco that's coming this way. Yeah, I see it. Isn't it beautiful? So fresh, so clean, like it's straight out of the box. I mean, yeah, it's nice, but I prefer it to have a used look to it. In an ideal world, that would be nice. But I'm sure the owner doesn't have the confidence, skill or time to undertake such a job. Then why don't they just send it to Emperor's Path? Emperor's Path? Yeah. SBJ has years of experience in model railways and wargaming. The ability to meet your weathering needs and works with you during the whole process to ensure the project is how you want it, not like it's come through a factory. Come on, that must cost a fortune. Not really. He offers different levels of weathering at really affordable prices. I've got my whole fleet weathered by him. My loco has got the full treatment whilst my rolling stock just a dusting with the airbrush and it looks really authentic. I might just get a quote. How do I contact him? You can get him on Instagram at Emperor's underscore path, by Facebook Emperor's Path or Emperor's Path Contact at gmail.com. Emperor's Path Weathering. If it's not filthy, let's change that. And we are back, and this week we have our first guests on the show, uh, which is uh, hopefully a privilege for them, and it's certainly a privilege for us. Today is Sanford East, and it's a team. It's Richard and son Ollie. So welcome to the show, guys. How are you? Hi, James. Hi, Sam. Yeah, uh, really good. Great to be on the podcast. Thanks for uh, thanks for asking. We love it. It's really good. Four episodes in. We're really, really enjoying it. So great to be part of it. Yeah, exactly. It's the perfect thing to do when you're uh, doing hobby yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Idea. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. You've, you've started strong. Yeah, to be honest, that's, that's all we need. So thanks for coming. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you're, you're welcome. Excellent stuff. So for people that aren't aware of you guys, uh, can you give us a little description of your layout? Yeah, absolutely. Sanford East is set somewhere in the 80s and the 90s, which is pretty much where my trade memories start and end. It's based in the carriage. Uh, as always with these things, space is a bit of a premium and... I was really keen to get something that was workable and hopefully finishable, if that's ever a thing in model railway world. Um, so it's on a it's on a ten foot by five foot baseboard. It's not massive, um, but trying to make it as prototypical as we could was was quite important to us. Discovered your channel a few years ago, and, and uh, yeah, as you say, it's West Country, and it's that sort of era that really does appeal to me. So I think it's an absolutely fantastic looking layout. So I'm going to interrupt very, very quickly. And I, no way is that a five foot layout. You guys, how have you managed to, so anybody who's not looked at it, first of all, pause here, go and have a look on Instagram and have a look at some of the shots that they've managed to achieve. In no way, shape or form would I have ever thought that your layout was only five foot. I know, well, it's, it's five foot sort of deep, 10 foot long. Um, and the wonderful art of, being a college student doing photography back in the day means I've been able to wheel out those skills. And uh, use of telephoto lens does help quite a bit. Well, yeah, so, I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, when you're negotiating with the boss of the house, there's certain certain requirements in the garage that, you know, mundane stuff like tumble dryers still need to fit in and other other exercise equipment. So you have to work around these things, don't you? Aren't you? I don't know about that. Don't say things like that. My wife listens to this podcast. She'll get ideas. This, uh, this, this is my 20 feet of garage and I'm having it, all right? <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't say any more. I say she listens. Um, 
lovely stuff yeah your photos on uh, instagram are incredible um they really do like sam says that is impressive but you know it's only five foot wide but it does look bigger through the photos so yeah if anyone listening hasn't found it then please do go find sanford east thanks for the introduction and telling us all about your layout we're going to move into the important bit now and that's our questions so uh you know the format we've done it with uh, ourselves um we've tried it doesn't seem to be any problems so i'm going to start off with what is your favorite type of traction is it steam is it diesel or is it electric off the bat this is a relatively easy one for me so it's definitely diesel so i guess that growing up in the 80s 90s living in dorchester i was blessed with two stations one dorchester south and one dorchester west which meant that we've not only got london bound trains but we also got trains from bristol so fantastic mix of traction and a lot of what is on the layout is stuff that i remember so things like um my dad who's a massive southern railway enthusiast uh, and that's where the hobby sort of came from really would take me on day trips to westbury where i'd stand there and look at the new class 59 coming through the station or nice. 50 sixties or whatever it might be um so yeah it's it's certainly diesel for me it's a good answer that's one i, I definitely like um and ollie how about you are you in, are you in the same ballpark there definitely uh diesel is my my preferred 100 percent. i do like steam steam is nice but diesel in my opinion sounds better and it it looks better i'll move from the young man now i say <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I i think the the biggest question for me is so so ollie you, you're you're working on a layout with your dad like do you do you think that a lot of your preference has stemmed from working on this layout with your dad has it always been like that or or is it a case of you already like diesel and it just so happened one day at the dinner table you both went oh, i like diesel oh, i like diesel do you want to play trains or anything like that or is it sort of you work together and that's that's why you love what you love uh it's okay for my dad it's the growing up with him having a model railway and then you're know, having the garage having the space having the idea me joking saying they never build a layout and uh, him proving me wrong that, that was a constant thing by the way <laughs> Like, you're never going to build a layout, Dad. Like, yeah, yeah, I will. Okay, right. So uh, we'll move on to the next question then. And that is, don't know if you have had a little try in any other gauges before. I take it your layout is our gauge, but what is your favourite scale? Yeah, I mean, without being too boring, it is double O gauge all the way. That's what I had as a kid. Uh, it's not too small for my failing eyesight and it's not too big uh, and fits just right in the space that we've got. That said, if I had the money, I would definitely consider O gauge. Um, to have an O gauge, unrevised, NSE, weathered, class 50, somewhere in the garage would be amazing. Um, so I'm always in awe of those things. You're yeah. a good company for that. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I think we can all be agreed on that one. <laughs> but I wouldn't, balance, I wouldn't balance it on a fence post like, like <laughs> I did at the engine shift. Small disclaimer for anyone listening. Uh, today just so happens to be the day after gauge master decided to post a video of their brand new class 73 uh, is it pullman brighton bell liveried loco on a fence post and then today they did the exact same thing but then they did it with the double o gauge model and the n gauge model so that's that's why it's the talking point today because it's uh, i think everyone's talking about it quite quite the daring thing to do with the uh, o gauge model i think it gave a few people anxiety didn't it ollie uh same question to you what is your favorite scale well, just like Dad, it's double O. I mean, as I said in the other question, it's what I grew up with. That being said, but I have experimented before with double O nine. I have Bankman's Scarlowy. I don't really use it. It sits in a sits on the shelf and it will just be there. And I've also experimented with G scale as well. You know, if you look close if you look far enough on Instagram, I I'm sure you'll see a few videos of it outside. Okay, cool. Uh, GG scale, that's, uh, that's it's always an interesting one. I see it at exhibitions, but I've never had the privilege of seeing it in gardens and that. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got you know, a fun one to play with, I'd imagine. I'm, I'm just asking to sort of clarify. So you're both happy to say that double O is your favourite scale? If you're going to pin us down, double O is our yeah. favourite scale, yeah. Cool. Right then, uh, let's move on to what is your favourite loco that you own? So, favourite loco that I own... This harks back to 13-year-old me in 89, standing on Dorchester West Station, summer holidays, um, normally about half 11 in the morning and just after five 
in the afternoon when the bucket and spade trains would come from Cardiff to Weymouth and back. And the haulage on the front of that was always a 37.4. In particular, there was four of them, uh, which was 408, 407, 427 and 428. But my personal favourite is 37427 in large logo livery named Bonchi Burmo, which uh, I have the model of um, done by Batman. Um, great model. But again, you're just reminiscing of the days when everything was footloose and fancy free. So, um, yeah, that's my favourite model. And one I nice. That is a nice choice. Nice, solid choice. There. I do I do love a 37. Uh, how about you, Ollie? What is your favourite loco? Well, my favourite loco is 5026 Indomitable because it's the first 50... 50- I ever saw when dad took me down to the diesel garden in Swanage in 2021. It sounded amazing and it looked amazing. And um, it looks even better when it's being weathered by Rob. Jesus, no custom weather. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's the end of this uh, conversation. I was going to say, say, you you, you had Sam there. He was on your side, class 50, (laughs) and then you went and just mentioned some of his rivals. Obviously (laughs) obviously joking. There's this weird thing that people think that people who do weathering like hate each other, and it's like some weird gang warfare of shark and jets. We all love each other. We're all absolutely fine. Well, I am. I don't know anyone who has beef with me about it. it. Having seen the 50 running around, it is absolutely stunning. There is always a question that rattles around in this household, though which is revised or unrevised. So uh, there's always a good debate on that one. I mean, do, do, do we have time to answer it? I mean, I mean, mine's a quick, quick answer. And I'm going to say original is straight up the best of all the liveries, personally. Unrevi- See, at the moment, Indomitable is currently in a revised livery, which I might be right in saying that it never did in its BR days. Uh, but we actually quite like it with the blue nameplate. So, um, mm. Yeah, it is, it is. We do flip and flop, I have to say. Mm. Yeah, I like yeah. advised. I was wondering, oh, I'm going to cause trouble here. But I think we all agree, we all like never South East. That's, that's the important thing. Absolutely. Good middle ground like that. Awesome. Thanks thanks for those answers, guys. That's great stuff. With that covered, what is the favourite loco that you don't own? So this is the one that's always, <laughs> always slipped away from me and I've never quite committed to. Again, child of the 80s, I signed up to a rail riders club back in 1985 or something. And um, back in those days, of course, they had a 47.4 that was an intercity livery that was named Rail Riders. And I was like, I was always on the chase to see it. I never saw it. And then Batman released a limited edition, I think, of 500, probably a few years ago now. Uh, Every now and again, one comes up on eBay and I look at it and I go, I want that. I want that so bad. But then I won't pay the money for it because it's like the older model. So I'm my own worst enemy as to why I don't own it. But that's the one that I, I hanker after. That's fair enough. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, that, well, it'll be a nice nice sort of memento to have if you could get hold of it. And uh, You never know with the, um, the retooling and that, it might might appear again. It's sort of one of those things that hold and hope, don't you? Uh, Ollie, uh, same question to you. What's your favourite loco that you don't own? Definitely, it's got to be Rodney, 5021. It's again, it's a loco that I saw at Swanage Diesel Gala. It's where most of our like diesel mem- my diesel memories will come from because that's the best way I can see uh, diesels from the past. The Acura scale one is looking, it's looking pretty tempting. It might end up on the birthday list or Christmas list at some point. That, yeah, that, that, that's a good loco to put on the list. I think they abs- uh, the prototypes look absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to the. Uh, I think I think we all are, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. We when we went to uh, half term, we went up in and around near Sheffield. Sheffield and uh, popped into rails of Sheffield. Uh, I can't remember the name of their the one that they're doing with a cure scale, but they had the you know, two, 50, it was 5020. 5020, was it? But I don't know the name. But we saw the prototype there and it did look amazing. It does, doesn't it? It looks really promising. I think, I think they're coming out in about Octoberish time. Well, hopefully, fingers crossed. So, um, something for us all to look forward to there. Rich, quickly going back to the uh, your one, the rail riders. Am I right in saying that that's in the, the intercity livery with... Uh, the sort of the bigger yellow ends on it. Is that right? Yeah, I'll, I'll put it out there. I think that's one of the best liveries they put the 47 in. Agreed, completely agree. Um, so obviously Backman do a version of it, very, very reliable version. Have you ever thought about getting that loco and renumbering it? Or is that something that's just not not for you, not in your wheelhouse? You can't do that, I found out, because oh. I don't know uh, the there, but I thought like your 47 you have, it's mm-hmm. got the... Uh, is it aerials? Yeah, the radio cab. Yeah. Rail riders never had that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So the back the model that they made with like for rail the rail riders version doesn't have it. That's so interesting. See, this is I'm 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 kind of lazy when it comes to things like this. If it's for me and it's my own version, I'm really lazy, but I'll do the 
stuff if it's for someone else. And it's just really interesting to hear things like that because my initial thought would have been comes in a version, let's see if we can get it done. Let's let's achieve Rich's dream of getting rail riders <laughs> on, on, on the rails. Um Start off his memory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I I do strongly agree with you. That is the best livery that a 47 has ever appeared in. So yeah, c- completely yeah. agree. Cool. So moving on then, we'll uh, ask you, what is your favourite project that you've undertaken so far? So uh, I've never had the opportun- opportunity to do it until this layout. Two things I knew that I wanted. First one was a bridge. Second one was let's go crazy and stick a canal under it. And how's that going to work? Um, so massive challenge using resin. Um, and if I'm honest, the first time I did it, I was like, this is quite nerve wracking because you've got to get the temperature right and you've got to stir it right. And for whatever reason, I do not know. When I decided to block off one end, I thought, I know, a couple of layers of masking tape would be absolutely fine to hold all of that warm resin. So I so I poured it in uh, and I thought, well, this is okay. Everything's holding. Walked out. Five minutes later, Ollie comes out from the garage and says, Dad, said, yeah, it's leaking all down the sides. <laughs> and it was. Uh, and then we had pools in the resin and everything else. So um, so I learned from that and I had to do it again, but this time with plywood front, which if anybody's having a go, make sure that you secure either end of your layout when you are pouring resin because it will find any hole. So the second pour was a lot more successful. Have that said, I really enjoyed doing it. We used the murky water water from Woodland Scenic, um, and I really like that sort of feature. It gives something a little bit different, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, that was my that was my favourite butter challenge. I do I do like that story because I feel your pain. I don't know if you ever followed my channel, but um, I had similar issues when trying to make the river on my 009, um, and I, I, it just was a disaster. So. <laughs> I, I used the, the stuff you heat in a pan and tried pouring it on and then it cooled down about halfway and then I realised I couldn't put the pan down and then it fell on the layer. I, yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't an enjoyable experience. Um so I can feel your pain there, but uh, that is um yeah, quite a good project. I think you have a little video on YouTube of you doing that if if, uh, if I recall. I was sort of having a little look earlier. Yeah, yeah, I've I've I've, there's a few YouTube bits. Um, I haven't really gone into it in a big way. I think that's more time more than anything. I find taking the odd picture and stick on Instagram a lot easier. But um, yeah, there is a yeah. there there is a video from back in the day. Yeah, I was going to say yeah because I wasn't going to ask if you were sort of planning to put any more videos or anything like that on your on your YouTube channel to have a few running sessions of the layout or anything on there. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd absolutely love to. I think somewhere between. Uh, life that is children marriage and work and everything else around it it's quite hard to invest that time i find at the moment but uh, it's, it's, it's it's certainly on the wish list yeah, that's fair enough yeah, and obviously me and sam youtubers as well completely understand the time and effort it takes to put these things together oh absolutely uh, um i can say that you've both absolutely put the fear of godding to me knowing full well that within the next year or so <laughs> I've got to do somewhere in the region of about four foot by eighteen inches worth of resin. So, so <laughs> thanks, guys. You'll be you'll be you'll be, you'll be fine, Sam. It's no yeah. problem. Mm. You learn from our mistakes. <laughs> you'll both be on the end of the phone. I have both your phone numbers now. <laughs> but I, I'm going to try something else on the boys' lap. I'm going to try the toilet paper method. I don't know if you've seen that one before. It's um, I can't remember the chap the. It's Mark Lynn of Sweden. That's him. So he mm-hmm. did it. I had a go on a Star Wars diorama and I thought it came out all right. And I thought I'm going to have a go on, on the boys layout um, and see how that turns out. So it could be an alternative to resin. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see okay. on that one. He's already changed his mind on what layout he wants anyway. So we probably won't get that far. <laughs> uh, Ollie, same question to you then. Uh, what is uh, your favourite project you've undertaken? Well, definitely the uh, uh, the updated bridge, I guess that's what you could say. We had a, a resin one before. It was a bit. It was a bit tight on either sides, and we couldn't run like the HST. We couldn't run the Mark Threes on the fourth line because it would rub on the uh, rub on the bridge, and it would make it. You know, it would damage us, damage the product. So we had to we had to change that. So we did, and we the new bridge came in, and uh, yeah, it, it, I enjoyed doing it. You know, making the little odd suggestions to Dad. Yeah, because he's definitely the uh, main person. Is is this I, the one where you? Stuck the a photo for the DMU going across and sort of suggested like there's another line there. Is that is that, is that the yeah, bridge? That's the bridge. That's that the does one. look that does look quite good. But that also looks like a whole can of worms because it looks like once you put that bridge in and you've got that possible disused line, the next thing you know, there's a branch line being added on. And <laughs> I I think we should actually just rewind here a little bit and ask Holly 
what the real reason was why we had to replace the bridge. The real <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, here we right. go. Here comes no. the dirt. Exclusive, you heard it here first. <laughs> Christmas like last year? Yeah. Or the, the, last, well, the, last, the last Christmas. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a class 90. Yeah, class 90. And um, no. pentagraph didn't go under. So we had to change that. So there was enough room for the pentagraph to go under and uh, not come out snap. So that, that's the real reason why we had to change the entire <laughs> I mean, the, the, the bridge project does look outstanding. Like the, the finished, it's, it's obviously nice having hobby friends who you constantly like talk to and like like photos, video share and all that sort of stuff. I've never, ever envied you guys so much as when I saw that bridge project finished. And I was like, oh, you absolutely... <laughs> It just looks so fantastic. And you've done a really good job of where you've effectively carried on the scenery a little bit afterwards. And it really brings it to life. And I think it's it's just a really outstanding, very scenically beautiful area on a layout that was already outstanding. And you've just sort of, oh, I'm just going to do a put a bridge in. Next thing you know, I'm just sat there like anger liking the photo. Something about a train going over a bridge over a railway line, isn't it? It's a, that's... I think that's sort of the, everyone's kind of goal for a model railway. I think that's definitely what I want on mine anyway. Well, if if I'm honest, that we didn't really consider that. Uh, and what I like about the power of social media is that we then put out, what should we do? Should we have a road bridge or should we have a rail bridge? And the uh, the good followers of San Fadis decided that a rail bridge would be good, and we went with it. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it turned out okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely did. I totally agree with that. Um, and the right choice by your followers, I'd say. Absolutely cool. Um, so, what is your next hobby purchase? Um, well, there's sort of two. Is that okay to do two? Yeah, go for it. Ah, so, um, they're, they're both by uh, Acura Scale. So, we're waiting for the Mark II Cs, which uh, are due out obviously the back end of this year, to go with the two Bs, which will be lovely behind the 50s. The thing I'm really excited about it is a class 50 by Acura Scale, but it is 5149 Defiance, um, just because I I always liked seeing it, um, and it's going to go beautifully behind the rake of CDAs that we have, and really appropriate just for the West Country. So um, that's my; those are my two. So quite excited about it. That does sound good. Yeah, I really. I look forward to seeing the photos of that. Um, I think that would look quite wonderful in your layout. And, and Ollie, what's in the pipeline for you? My next purchase is going to be not. It's going to be pretty boring. It's not going to be as um, extravagant as 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 Dad's. But uh, when we went to Sheffield, uh, when we popped into Rail to Sheffield, I saw for sale the forty five oh six oh. It looked really nice, so I had enough money, so I thought I got to get that. But the windscreen wipers. So one of the windscreen wipers has fallen off. So that's definitely uh, something I need to find and replace. Um, Backman do do it, but not the right colour. But it's nothing I can't paint. Um, yeah. And I also need nameplates for it, which uh, Shearwood Forster, which I well, ordered. It. I mean, that's a, still a pretty solid purchase. Like, I mean, James and I were really boring and both mentioned point motors as our purchases. <laughs> so the fact that you've actually gone with stuff that is on a train is still good. Um, and I, I can speak from personal opinion, and I hope the, the rest of you agree with me. The nameplates make a massive difference on a loco. Like, I never thought they would, but as soon as you put the etched nameplates on there, it completely changes the look of the loco and for the better. So, yeah, oh, s- s- strongly behind that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But the nameplates, especially when you got that subtle bit of weathering of like the, the streaking just off the edges of them, and it really does give that sort of final finish. And uh, I, I do like the choice of the class forty five as well as a purchase. I do, I do love, I love a peak. Um, because I'm not certain I did see them, but I was old enough uh, for when I was about four that my granddad used to take us to uh, Midland Main Line and we used to see the trains go by and it was just in their final years. So I like to think I definitely saw one, but I can't be certain because I can't remember. <laughs> they're, they're great locos, so yeah, awesome choice there. Excellent answers. Uh, okay, we'll move on to our next question then, which is what is your favourite part of the hobby? In all honesty, I live in a world of good is good enough when it comes to model railway. Um, you won't find any significant detail stuff in terms of what we do. As long as it looks and feels right, it's okay, with the one exception, which is the laying of the track. That's the one thing that I get a bit possessive over and, and needs to be right. Um, so, yeah, so that's the that's the bit that I enjoy doing, looking down the lines 
getting the right curves in, um, making sure that it looks good. And I've had countless issues in the past where I'm just like, no, I'm just going to bang this down and crack on. Uh, and then you have trouble later down the line with um, running of locos. And although the garage that it's in is integral to the house, it was quite important that we do have some level of expansion gaps just in case, especially yeah. on a Friday evening when it's washing day and the, and the old tumble dryer's on full pelt, it gets a bit warm. So... <laughs> So that. <laughs> hey, imagine it sort of feels sometimes like florida in your layout room <laughs> well it's it's okay in the winter uh, and it's all right when it's really warm because we can whip up the garage door and life's generally okay but mm. the in-betweeny days yeah it can get a bit fruity in there so <laughs> <laughs> no metcalf kits then well, we do have one metcalf kit actually oh do you yeah. Oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah the warehouse at the back of the layout is metcalf yeah. oh okay oh yeah yeah you do yeah yeah Cool. Oh, that's that's uh, yeah. I like I like that. Um, track lane is that's still a bit of a dark art to me. I, I still tend to mess things up, <laughs> just not get it right. So I'm quite envious of that of nice smooth running track. That's uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's that's the goal for mine. But we'll see. <laughs> anyway. well, I, I, I find the old flexi track makes that a bit easier. Yeah. But what I didn't enjoy was connecting because of the the five foot depth. Um, you're having to use second and third radius curves. So leading around into the fiddle yard, some of that is set track um, and connecting then uh, flexi to set track. That was that was a bit frustrating at times, but um, I had to hide as much as I could in the fiddle yard. So it's fine. Yeah, I can imagine because I suppose you've got the rigidity of the set track and trying to get the flexi track to line up to it. That's got to be a bit awkward. Yeah, making yeah. it look half decent and not like an awkward egg um, was quite a challenge. Yeah, it, as I say, in the photos, it looks very good. So it looks like Thank the you. hard work has paid off. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and Ollie, uh, same to you then. Uh, what do you enjoy most about this hobby? I like being able to see uh, your own work. So like I can go in the kitchen, put some detailing on the front of a loco, like a 50 or something, and put it back on. I can look at it forever and go, I've done that. And it, and it looks nice and, you know, the same with the nameplates and just any any little thing like the greenhouse there next to the church. Inside that's like little plants that, you know, look like there's something growing in there. And it's small little details, but it's something that's just big for me because you can see I, I, I can tell myself I've done that and I can, you know, do it again sort of thing. Yeah, uh, that's like a really key part as well is you, you don't necessarily if people notice it on Instagram, like that's really great. But it's the fact that, you know, you've done it. And you can just sit back and I don't know what it's like in terms of sitting position positions for you guys in the in the garage, but I imagine the ability to just sort of sit there, watch your locos go around to go, I did that. That looks ten times better because I did X, Y, and Z. And I think Sanford East especially has so many little pockets of all of these amazing areas that actually have such I think it's a Dorset thing, because I think the same can be said about dibs shunting layout as well. There's so many little details that are around that layout and i say the same about your layout it's like you could you could pan the camera and zoom in on a particular thing and look around and there's so many little tiny details that you guys have done that just pop and i think it's a fantastic thing to have followed by the fact that you've got a loco that you've just done all of this amazing detailing and just sort of swans past as well and it's like this is outstanding so yeah congrats i mean i, I i'll say that ollie is the detail man and i'm like here's the track down Yes, tick. Is there a station? Yes, tick. Is there maybe a canal in? Yes, tick. And then I run trains and Ollie's like, well, Dad, I think we need to have a look out. We need to get this. So like the lighting is a great example. Mm. So when we went to a model shop in Poole in Dorset, Ollie said, we need to get the lighting, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's get the lighting. And then it probably took nine months of nagging uh, and a wet Saturday afternoon for me to actually get my finger out and do something about it. Um, <laughs> but he'll, he'll see and visualise that stuff. I, I won't so much. Um, so fair play to him. No, that's, that's good. That's 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 the, that's the kind of teamwork that the layout needs, isn't it? It's that fresh pair of eyes and looking at it from a different angle. Um, and I, I I like that. It's something that's nice that you can all come together and, and bring this great final product out of it. Right then. Uh, not that we're suggesting that you tear your layout up right now, but if you were to create a new layout, what is the one thing that you would want on it? So for me. Uh, in, in the term of Dorset, is a proper uh, diesel depot because we don't really have one. We have something that looks sort of vaguely light. You park your diesel up and get fuel in it. But it's it's not one with hard standing. And having visited West Hill Wagon Works and got a thorough education in terms of what they do, 
Um, some of their diesel depot stuff is just phenomenal. And I think if we're, if I was going to do it again, I'd have to have that in full effect because um, uh, it makes just such a difference and just looks great. And I'm always envious of seeing people's um, depots uh, and how that looks like. When I look at Garrett and Parkways, it just looks phenomenal. And it's very photographic as well. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's on my would be on my wish list. That's, yeah, Garrett and Parkway, I do love his depot that he's got on there. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I totally get you with the West Hill Wagon Works. I bought a few bits when I was having a go at the TT gauge depot and, and the stuff you can get to go in all those little details like the filing cabinets with the drawers open and the tables and the, you know the, the um, welding trolley it's just brilliant isn't it so yeah, yeah. that's oh, that's an excellent choice um ollie if uh, you were to start a project then what what would you have to have uh, on your layout well i do like the look of i think the best way to describe it is brick arches i, I don't know there's yeah. a different name for it there if if you look because when we, again linking back to sheffield when we went to lead station uh when it's is it, it's going up to York, isn't it? That way, yeah. There's all those arches, and they look they look beautiful. I mean, and then you can't really see them from a distance, unfortunately, because you know you everything around it. But I looked at it and I loved it, and it's something that you know, if I if I have a layout when I'm older, it might be something that I do maybe some paint and graft to. That's that's cool. I I had the. The privilege of spending a few weeks in Leeds when I when I was uh, training at Sigling School, so I know exactly what you mean with those those brick arches. Um, they've sort of got like nightclubs and stuff built in into underneath, um, and there is definitely something very appealing about that. And and the elevated railway above the town, I always think looks quite good. So yeah, I can I can understand that. And I think that would look quite cool as a layout. Cool, yeah. nice answer. It's, it's a good vibe. Isn't it? I, I can see where it's going. Yeah, all the details you can put on the side of the bridge, the little shrubs and the overgrown stuff. and That is quite a cool answer. I do like that one. Uh, what is the one hobby item you'd encourage everyone to buy? So just for clarity, I'm not affiliated to Halfords in any way. But the one thing that I cannot do without as much as I have to have butter on my toast is Halfords ultra matte brown camouflage paint. So... It covers everything and does everything in my world. So the ballast uh, gets covered in ultra matte brown paint with a little bit of grey primer on it. If I need to weather anything quickly, close your ears, Sam. If I need to weather anything quickly, it gets a smash of ultra matte brown paint. It, um, it just is good and dries so quickly and uh, does a good enough job to, for me to think, yes, I'm happy with that. So that would be the one thing I'd encourage anybody to go and have a, have a purchase of. Nice. I've googled it. It's going. It's going. Going in my basket on payday. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah, I was going to say I might give that a try just to see what it's like. That's pretty, well, they, pretty good. they also do. They do four in the range. <laughs> There's a green that they do that I find really helpful when you've just done your static grass and you think that looks a little bit too bright and you haven't got the different fibres you need. A quick spray of the green dulls life down a little bit. It makes it look borderline weathered around the track edge. To marvel, yeah, it'd be the best seven pound you spent. Trust me. Okay, that sounds good. That's good. Yeah, that's some pretty good tips there. I mean, well, thank you for that, Rich. That's uh, welcome. Definitely something to try. Awesome, uh, Ollie. Same question to you then. Uh, what would you recommend to uh, people out there to purchase? This may sound a bit ridiculous because it's in no way related to the hobby in in a sense. But uh, a cocktail sticks. They're very helpful because you can say I'm putting a nameplate on the loco. You put a bit of glue on a like a like some plywood. You dip the cocktail stick in, and just a little small amount in the middle of the nameplate that was already on the loco. If you know what I mean, so not the actual nameplate, just a little thin line in between, like in the middle, and you stick it on, and it works amazing. And same. Same can be said for putting detail at the front of locos and sticking small little details back on if things things fall off. I can vouch for that. As you said that, I'm actually staring at a pack of cocktail sticks on my workbench. So it's a, um, I I can yeah totally agree. They are such a versatile tool and really useful. Um, and uh, yeah, need to be in everyone's modelling kit. I think so. Thank you for that answer. That's the a good great news. Tip. 
the good news is, is that the Halfords that's just down the road from me also has a B&M next door. So I'm now stocking up on camouflage spray paint and uh, yes. cocktail sticks so that I can at least try <laughs> these things. I would I would never, this sounds so silly. You've said it and I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I would never have thought of using a cocktail stick. But then you're also talking to the man who currently has 2,000 cotton buds currently sat in the on the desk next to him. So, I mean, it, it, it depends in the eye of the beholder i guess is what is the most super useful thing but i've added both of those to my list because not tried them i'll definitely give them a go so thanks boys all, all i can say is a word of warning um don't combine the two uh, as i did with once a can of spray paint that i couldn't get to spray properly and try to stick a cocktail stick in it to clear it and just end up having the paint explode everywhere <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> not recommended <laughs> Good to uh, know. Yeah, good Thanks, answers. Don't, don't combine them. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Um, cool. So I don't know about you guys. Uh, are you massive exhibition guys? Do you go out to see shows a lot and stuff like that? We we don't really. I mean, you know, the Weymouth exhibition we'll, we'll go to because it's close. Otherwise, we don't really venture out and do that sort of thing. It's uh, normally the, the ones that are going on too far away from us and never got the time. Sometimes. Cool. Would you would you say that you have a favourite exhibition and also do you have a favourite layout? Uh, and as I said to Sam previously, this layout doesn't have to be an exhibition. It can be something on YouTube or Instagram, uh, like the likes of Penda Museum, Miniature Wonderland, wh- whatever is out there. Um, what, what do you so, guys like? Yeah, I think as Ollie said, you know, we, we don't go to Lowe's. We probably should, if I'm honest. I probably needs to be on our list for this year. Um, but Weymouth, or if you Google it, Waybeefa, uh, is um, where we do like to go. Um, we like to try and keep things local as much as we can. But I think in terms of favourite layout, this doesn't, this is not an exhibition one, but I absolutely love NSE Latchmere because it does all the bits that I don't do on my layout. So um, being in Dorchester, you, there is the third line. That sort of came quite late and took over from the 33-1 and 40 Cs. Um, mm-hmm. But I just love some of the stuff he's got on there. So the weed killing train the other day sent me all unnecessary and I had to go into a dark room with a flannel to cool down a little bit. Um, <laughs> the, the, the 442 that he has running around, um, the choice of music, it's just my jam, basically. Um, mm. uh, fantastic looking layout. And and I'm envious of the length of trains that he runs. So, um, yeah, fair play to him. It's, it's a good looking layout. It is an excellent layout. And yeah, I, I totally agree with those 20s. And we were sort of talking about earlier and the hope that maybe Batman might re release the, uh, the rail riders. It's those class 20s I'm hoping will get re released at some point in that Hunslet livery. Yeah. Um, because I'd, I'd love to model that weed killing train. So, yes, I understand the love for that. Um, awesome stuff. So, Ollie, uh, I'll fire the same question to you then. Um, favourite exhibition your favourite layout well when we went to Weymouth um, Weymouth exhibition I think it was the last year yeah. we saw a layout I think I believe it's called Newport Street yeah uh, it's uh, based in the 90s sort of yeah. 90s huh? yeah the the locos looked amazing the the way he's detailed it looks amazing as well depot layout on that, yeah yeah, hence, yeah, the, yeah it was really nice in the locos yeah they looked Lovely. It was it was all e- EWS and trans really I think. Um, so oh, really? I, you know I, I had to step outside of uh, my normal comfort zone, <laughs> but it was uh, it was a phenomenal looking thing. And I think the same guy now has done a a model of um, Cardiff Canton, but that looks phenomenal too. So yeah, ticks lots of boxes. Awesome oh. stuff. Do you know what? I don't, there's not there's not a lot of that sort of era of the early privatisation layouts and oh, I think that's quite missing from the exhibition circuit so that does sound like a very uh, cool layout to have a look at um, I'll have to sort of have a look around see if I can find any uh, footage of it so thank you for that one Newport Street, the guy I'm not, I, can't, I don't know, I think the guy's name is Chris but he's on Instagram as 6500 so that as in the numbers, Chris so if you if you have a look on that you'll see his layout Awesome stuff Awesome stuff. I have to look for that definitely. Um, and I, as, as I'm saying, this this talk of depots, uh, it's been quite convenient for me because I'm working on my layout at the moment, and I 
I'm, I'm in an hour in about a depot or stabling lines. And this conversation has definitely swayed me to having a small depot building um, on my layout. So uh, I'm liking where this is going. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. It's been excellent, excellent stuff. Um, sadly, we're coming to the end of our, of our chat. Um, and we only have one question left, but it's the important one. It is, what is your favorite resource out there, social media wise? Is it YouTube or is it Instagram? I've got two because I like to be a bit controversial. So, YouTube, we use a fair bit, or I use a fair bit because there's lots of like 80s, 90s footage of uh, 50s, 33s, Cornish 37s, the HSDs, all the stuff that I really enjoy. Um, so it's good just to get some random formations in there as well. So you think that never happened. Oh, yes, it did happen. So now I can do something about trying to model that. The other resource, uh, and this guy is insane in his knowledge, is my dad. Um, so he grew up Southern Steam. But if there's ever a query, and it's always great, the bit I really enjoy is when it's, I don't know, it might be Father's Day, Mother's Day, having a barbecue, the three of us. So me, my dad, Anthony and Ollie, we're in the garage, we talk stuff. If there is a query, we'll ask him. And this guy is a walking railway encyclopedia, he knows. If he doesn't know, he's got something from 1969, a magazine that, that tells him exactly what it might be. So, uh, so yeah, he's pretty insane and a massive, a massive resource and uh, really useful to have around. That that is a curveball I was not expecting. <laughs> I, know, I know you'd hit that you wouldn't wouldn't quite stick to the format of the answer, but I was not expecting your dad to be an answer. But what a superb answer! Um, I love that. Thank you very much, Rich. That's <laughs> I really love that answer. Um, so same for you, Ollie. Um, maybe you should go with the same answer as your dad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay so I'm a, I'm a bit different to dad i i prefer instagram because i can be scrolling anytime you know walking to school just sat in my bed and i can you know all the pictures i'll see there and i can look at the trains in the front where the location is the whole train i can go oh, i've got that i've got that i've got that and i can replicate what i've seen on on instagram is definitely a great resource for me because it's Many formations that I've made are from pictures from Instagram. Railway books as well. Old railway books can help. They're quite good. I've got a couple that I'll flick through if I'm bored. And I go, oh, again, I've got that, I've got that, I'll make it. That's cool. I really like that. I did, once again, you've you've both provided answers. That I, I wasn't expecting your dad, but also... <laughs> We, we never even mentioned the idea of it being a case of, well, let's go back to the basics and pick up the books. Like, despite the fact that James, we've had plenty of conversations where we talk about the fact that, oh, I've got this book. Oh, let me send you a picture of this book so you can have a look at it. So, yeah, it makes complete sense. We were heavily biased by just saying Instagram and YouTube when, when we did our initial initial question. I've been technologically brainwashed. Even though I have an entire bookcase of books, I constantly go back to. So, yeah, books is a brilliant and such an obvious answer now. <laughs> so... It's amazing what we found. Like we went to um, the Bluebell Railway last year and at Horsted Keynes, they've got a place where you can just like, it's a pound donation. But we were finding stuff from like 1990 and 1991 with, you know, as Ollie said, some of the formations that we've got or aspirations to get a formation like that because, you know, every now and again, somebody always likes to point out that what you're running isn't quite correct. Uh, and every now and again, we like to point out that what we are running is correct because there's a visual picture of it. So there's, you know, always expect the unexpected, I think. And and what I like is that sometimes what you think is correct actually isn't. <laughs> so it's good to get that mix. Mm. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I know the shop you're talking about, the Bluebell Railway as well, because when I went there last October, I did the same thing. I picked up about five books, three of which were multiple unit books, and then two were on Crompton's and Rail Freight. But yeah, going to bookshops like that at the um, the Heritage Lines and stuff like that, there's so many things that you can pick up by popping into those, and that is a key resource. I'm going to throw in an extra question just because it has interested me that you've mentioned your dad. So here's yeah. here's the big one. What is the best piece of information that your dad has ever provided you about model railways? That's a, that, that's a good question, Sam. Uh, oh, 
so, so he's always said to us, basically, sometimes you think it might not be right, but it probably is, and it has happened somewhere. Now, what I like about my dad is I'll say, that never did that. And he will go home, as I've said, <laughs> and he'll put out a railway mag from 1975, and he'll show me exactly where that happened. So, yeah, dad, dad's really liberal in that space, and, and I love it. Um, and he's got great, not just general knowledge of stuff, like Ollie bought some um, tail lamps. Dad could tell him exactly which tail lamps and what years they ran and were used. Like, you know, you just can't, you just can't buy that stuff, can you? So you um, it, it's great on the end of WhatsApp or Messenger or whatever. Uh, but yeah, Dad was very much, if you think it didn't run, it probably did. Uh, so crack on and do it. So, That's yeah. amazing. Well, that is the end of our questions. And I'd like to thank both Rich and Ollie for coming on the show and sharing their modelling experiences. Thank you very much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And if people do want to find you, how can they find your channel? Yeah, look, it's great. Thanks for having us. We really, uh, really enjoyed the time talking through some of these questions. Um, to, to find us, it's quite simple on Instagram or Facebook. It is Sam Felice, uh, and the same on, on YouTube. So if you get on and Google it, you should find us. Awesome. Well, I look I look forward to seeing that in the future. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to take a little break now and uh, come out to the end of the show. Okay, we are back. And that was our very first uh, chat with uh, our very first guests, uh, Rich and Ollie. And I'd like to, again, thank them for coming on the show and such a wonderful conversation to have with them uh it was a real pleasure um and i think sam they they've got a little announcement upcoming events i think something like that yeah they do have their layout appearing in model rail in the coming future now i'm very very excited to read about it it's always nice when a friend's layout gets in a magazine so if you're interested in checking out Samford East, if you can buy an upcoming issue of Model Rail, I'm sure if you're following Samford East on Instagram, they'll certainly announce when it's available and I will be picking an issue up and I'll make sure that Ollie and Rich do sign that copy for me. I'm very excited for them. So big congratulations to you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. That's always, I mean, it's always the goal of the achievement to get into a magazine. So um, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm still waiting on mine. Um, <laughs> promises have been made, but I'm still eagerly opening up a magazine magazine and looking at the back to see what will be a next month's magazine and, and to no avail but um we shall see <laughs> so. I'm, I'm really sorry for you on that aspect i mean i've not even got to the point where i'm even able to put it in so we'll we'll see um another thing following that interview uh, james and i are changing a slight structure to the questions um rich's answer to the final question was so fantastic and ollie as well because ollie also for us a curveball with that final question we will be changing the structure of that final question for the future so rather than just being instagram or youtube uh, it is going to be what is your favorite hobby resource and that can be anything so uh, thanks guys you've you've shown us that there are other options out there other than instagram and youtube and we can take that forward so they've, yeah, they've managed it is, to... i'll ask rich for his dad's phone number and i'll be um, phoning him up from now on uh, yeah exactly but yes yes they have broke the mold and um yeah we have indeed changed the structure of the questions because uh, a couple of weeks time we will have our second guest but we're not going to tell you that is because we like to play the game on instagram can you guess who's coming on our show so um do look out for the subtle hints we'll be dropping over the next few weeks for our next guest um now, whilst we're uh, sort of doing our outro, and I, I just want to um, do the usual of what I have to do, some form of apology where I've done something wrong, <laughs> such as the Class 28, the uh, in, inappropriate title about Fiddle Yard. And it turns out that a couple of weeks ago, when I recommended Jesse Sims' YouTube channel, and uh, he also has a great Instagram page too, uh, I said he has connections to Tony Wright, and there I wasn't wrong. Why I was wrong was, and, and it was because I had been reading a copy of Railway Modeler, and so therefore it was stuck in my head. Uh, I quoted his layout as being Grantham. This is not the case. Grantham is a completely different layout. Um, I top of my head now, I can't remember the owner, but it's it's an amazing layout. It goes out the exhibition circuits. It's awesome. It's like NER, um, all the expresses passing through, all the swapping the locos over. It looks fantastic. However. Tony Wright's layout is a little bifum. Uh, I do apologise, Tony. Um, in my mind's eye, the image of your layout was there. It was just had the wrong name associated to it. So, but my apologies there. Um, 
but yeah do look for tony's little buy from layout it's absolutely amazing um so yeah that's my apology for this week and um, come back next week for my next apology i'm sure i'll have something else <laughs> our social media recommendation of the week excellent uh so mine for this week is going to be model railways unlimited mike who runs model railways unlimited does some really informative videos and what i really like is mike used to live in haven which is just outside of portsmouth um and used to work the railway around here so in some of the videos you can get some really nice tidbits that are really useful for someone like me uh, he'll make a comment about when i was working in fratton and things like that and it's just a a nice little thing but he's just recently finished doing a three-part series on rail freight starting from the very beginning of the rail freight era right up until the end of it before it went to privatization okay that sounds quite cool it's a really nice series of videos really nice series three-part series that there's loads of other really good videos on there um the i discovered him a couple of years ago when i was looking at the backman 40c and the reviews on that and um he mentions in that that he used to um drive the locos that were connected to the 40 cs in portsmouth back when they used to uh run maybe on a sunday for maintenance okay. and stuff like that so it's oh, so re- 33 city. yes i believe so i did comment on one of the videos saying great series um but what i really want to hear is about your time in portsmouth if you could do a video based around that um yeah. I, th- I think he responded with he'd love to do it but he doesn't have four sigs or four veps to do the video with and i was like yeah you'd have to remortgage to do that uh that's cool i do love i do love a class 33 i got to drive one for my 30th birthday so um they have a special place in my heart nice um yes i even have the 33 102 was the one i got to drive and i have a model of it on my shelf and that's on the the, that was the never to be sold on ebay pile (laughs) it will stay with me um cool that sounds awesome so um just for anyone uh just to Who's having a frantic look for on YouTube again? What's the name of that channel? Uh, it was Model Railways Unlimited. Model Railways Unlimited. Excellent stuff. Um, okay, mine is not quite model rail related, but it's railway related. It's Diggle Junction, um, which is a channel that likes to put out weekly videos of all the passings through Diggle Junction, um, which is on one of the Trans Pennine routes. And this is channel um i love this channel and um it's so great to watch because there's so much interesting stuff that goes through there um and i've found it so inspiring over the last sort of few years of watching it um that's one of the main influences for me changing my modeling era just because of this channel um so yeah, they sort of try and do weekly videos and, and it was, um, it's, uh, or maybe like two parters, but quite often it's showing all the variations of different uh, trains that have passed through the area. They do get quite a variety. So it's really fascinating to watch. They're really informative to tell you the head codes and what's on there and everything like that. Uh, and then what I really like is when um, we get near to uh, the, uh, the next thousand mark on their channel, they'll go do a 24 hour special. And um, he's done like Eastley, spent 24 hours at Eastley, 24 hours at Doncaster. I think they did Acton Bridge. Um, and they're just great videos. I mean, absolutely mad to be out for 24 hours train spotting. I've, I've uh, just had a look at the channel and I can see that some of the, the, the most recent video is a 12 hour video. So that's definitely something you can look at. But there are some smaller ones as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, there's a, I think there's a live stream they have on there too. Um, so like permanent camera setup so um but yeah i really i really love that channel so it's not model railway related but um yeah i, I really do like the guys at diggle junction and uh everything they do and they've been quite i gave them a little shout out one of my videos and they've been quite supportive for my own videos since so it's been quite nice to interact with them so uh, that is my shout out for the week is diggle junction okay so um i think we'll uh, wrap that up for this week um and i'll sign off by saying the usual that hopefully we've been entertaining, informative, and have replaced your model railway, if only just for a little bit. I've been James, and with me has been Sam. Good night. This service terminates here. Please ensure you take all of your personal belongings with you.